Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, so I am very happy and excited about this uh, new uh, sessions of uh, uh, topics of talks on a sleep yoga practice. So uh, we have been taking some time break from the Facebook Live uh, teaching. So. Now this is the completely new um, topic and we will be continuing this topic from April so 11th till May uh, 11th so so basically whole month so we will be doing the practices of dream and sleep particularly practice focusing on a sleep so so I want to everybody um, just kind of bring all of your attention here a little bit and um, just wanted to say that we are all, we will be all completely committed, dedicated, dedicated to this month of focusing on a sleep yoga practice. So I promise myself one, this month, one single night, I will not just go to fall asleep without applying the practice. So that's my commitment. And those you feel comfortable making those that kind of commitment to yourself, go ahead and do it and make me tell me that you are going to do a comment, write in a comment saying you are here with me and you are going to commit for the this month uh, practicing every night and uh, that's how we are going to support each other. So that's uh, that's very important. That uh, really like a feeling that we are all helping each other, supporting each other, reminding each other, inspiring each other to focus on a practice. So, so uh, just uh, let me know uh, all you hear me and you are with me and just tell me yes. Uh, and then the part that I wanted to begin with is this, uh, this sleep yoga practice and the dream yoga practice. These practices are coming from the burn tradition that I'm going to teach here. It's coming from burn tradition and particularly uh, the text called Maji Sangji Jusum, uh, three great tantras of Mother Tantra and uh, particularly um, six method, practices of six method, particularly among six method, this practice of sleep yoga. So that's one chapter, specific chapter from Mother, Mother Tantra. So we're going to teach from there and as many of you know this Tibetan Yoga of Dream and Sleep book has been published in many uh, years ago and also has been translated in many languages. I don't know maybe over 20-25 languages has been translated. So um, I'm sure if you do not have one I recommend to get one, read and keep close to your bed. Um, so just kind of talking a little bit about the what is the dream yoga practice and what is the sleep yoga practice so just maybe a little distinction distinction between two is the the dream yoga practice is obviously working with the dream working with our thoughts emotions our uh, potentiality our uh, conditions our pain our wounds so dream yoga practice because every single night we have so-called samsaric sleep or samsaric so samsaric every night we have samsaric sleep which basically means that every night we have a dream which is related to uh, samsara which is related to our everyday life uh, which is related to our thoughts and emotions and conditions uh, that we think we we are conditioned to think we are addicted to think uh, so we feel we struggle with those thoughts all those thoughts and emotions causes a dream our body causes a dream so so all the practices working with this working uh, trying to figure it out trying to clear them and so that's all our basically uh, practice of dream yoga so using dream to realize oneself because dream is clearly one way of uh, experiences of our delusion 
So a dream, uh, if you look at your dreams, and that each of these dreams tells you some aspect of yourself, some conditions of yourself, some wounds of yourself, unless those condition, uh, aspect and wounds, conflicts are cleared, there is no uh, greater, deeper personal development, there is no enlightenment. So if we are able to work with them, uh, there is a, you know, it's a way of <clears throat> personal and spiritual development. That's what's happening. On the other hand, the sleep yoga practice is a little different. So it's not like uh, working with uh, thoughts and uh, emotions and pain, but it's rather working with awareness, pure awareness, uh, being presence, being aware, being here and now, being clear, being pure, being, being in oneself, connected to that sense of being. Uh, so, so more sense of working, work of pure awareness. So uh, just imagine when we do a uh, um, calm abiding practice like a Shine practice, uh, concentrating and then eventually through Shine practice, having a realization of insight like a Lang Tong, uh, meditation. So once you have that inside meditation, once you have s practice of self-realization or self-awareness, when and when you remain, when you abide in the nature of mind uh, during the daytime, uh, you are not trying to visualize anything. You are not trying to elaborate your thought. You are not sending light, receiving light, trying to changing things. You are simply being in the awareness of your true nature of your mind. So being in that pure awareness, it's like a sleep yoga practice. So during the waking state, working with the conceptual mind or working with the pure awareness. In the night, working with your dream or working with the pure awareness. So that's what the kind of basic differences between a dream yoga and, and a sleep yoga practice. Um, so here, um, the, one of the titles that we have used here is called uh, following, uh, How Following, fo uh, following sleep, Asleep with Awareness Can Change Mind. So basically, uh, falling sleep with awareness can change your mind. So just for a moment, think about that. Falling sleep with awareness can change your mind. Falling sleep with awareness can change your mind. So every single night, we fall asleep. So think about yesterday, night before, night before, for one week, last two weeks, last one month, how you have been following sleep. You, you are following sleep, but you are not necessarily aware of your position of your body, position of your mind, uh, last thoughts that you have, last feelings that you have, last emotions that you have, maybe last conflict and pain that you felt. You are not conscious of, probably most of the people, they are not conscious of any of those things before they go to sleep. Imagine that somebody has a pattern of, uh, habit and pattern of going to sleep with their pain body. You know, their awareness is too tired, their body is too tired, the ability to concentrate, focus, bring attention to the right place is too tired. So as they go to the bed, as they throw themselves on the bed, and then, of course, you have no awareness, but your conditional mind, your pain, your wound, your attention to those pain, you are kind of sink in those pain and conflict, you're still happening. And then what's happening in that night, you are falling asleep, falling asleep in that night, right? So, so when you fall asleep in that night, that night in those wounds, those pains, what happens? So whole night, whole night, that pain in your body, which you were not aware, it's kind of activated whole night in your body. 
or you have one single fear, one thought, just before you go to sleep, but you were not aware. So that whole night, seven, eight, seven, eight hours, you are continuously activating the fear, it, and it is affecting your body. So in a, in a negative sense, I think um, every single night when we go to sleep, we are not not just aware, but we are focused on very specific thing, very conditional things, and we are not conscious of that. It, but that does not mean if you are not conscious, does not mean it's not affecting you. It is affecting you. How we know it's affecting you? When you wake up in the morning, you see how do you feel? If you feel very exhausted, very tired, not rested, physical pain, more like a energetic pains, in a bad mood, kind of bad thoughts, bad feelings. When you wake up with those things, that's a clear sign of that you did not prepare well and you did not go to sleep well. You did go to sleep with all those conflicts and pains and wounds even without being conscious. So imagine our lifetime affected by those patterns of going to sleep. Imagine that, right? One third of our lifetime we sleep. So if you live 75 years, then you are sleeping 20, 25 years. So 25 years sleeping and 25 years sleeping with that bad manner, that is what is changing your life, but in a very negative way. And that's why I think today, today's world, in the modern world, because of the lights that we have, every light we have, every, in the street lights we have, uh, uh, the clock lights and uh, chargers and a refrigerator and a TV, and we have so much these lights and these, these all kind of some sense of uh, not not allowing us to fall asleep properly, and then our own all our thoughts and basically it is a big problem of sleep deprivation. So, so I think we we know as a society we lack sleep. We lack good sleep and we don't address them properly. So this is the month. This is the month I want everybody to say that I want you to really listen to these teachings very carefully. I want you to apply these practices as carefully as possible and I will try to not miss one single night. As I said, I promise myself this month I'm with all of you and I'm not going to miss one night without applying a practice, without doing preparation to go to sleep. So this is the commitment uh, I'm putting here and I hope all of you also with me here. So uh, of course as a result of these teaching and practices we might have a great experiences and sometimes I'm really surprised that during one weekend and we are reflecting, we are talking, we are sharing, we are supporting each other and somebody who have never have a lucid dream or have never have a, some sense of clear, clear luminous sleep and able to experience something in very short time and it, I have witnessed that many times because there are some of you might think, well, that, that's not impossible. So if you, if you have that thought this moment, that's not possible. You just made it not possible for yourself. And so if you, if you are able to change, change that mind pattern, you say, well, I don't know, maybe it's possible. Let's try because I have a good support this month. I will try my best. So come, come on with that attitude, with the right attitude, open attitude. So now, so what are the preparations? So, so as I said, how badly we go to sleep, so how well we can go to sleep. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, first of all, I think it's very important to be, be aware that um, just reflect a little bit in yourself. Uh, your every day uh, during the waking state, how does your day look like? What kind of, um, uh, kind of view you have of the world? What kind of view you have of the people that you're close to? What kind of view you have your relation to your work? 
what kind of view you have relation to the challenges that you deal with, the stress that you deal with, and uh, do you have more open relation to them, or you you have you believe in a uh, believe in a change and positive change, or you feel that you you are not conscious, you are not aware, you are stuck, and you kind of continuously going in that pattern. Just trying to bring a little bit more awareness during the daytime, of because every single thing. The way you see, where you feel, where you respond, where you react, um, and all of that during the daytime is it's affecting your night. So that's very important to remember. All of that is affecting your night. So if you can make it your day a little better, your night will naturally become a little bit better. And if you can bring more awareness before you go to sleep, let's say, you know, okay, let's talk about this. You know, one thing we, we during the daytime people say, "Oh, I don't have a time. I'm I'm too busy. I I I don't want to take time away from my family. I don't want to take away from my project, my work. I don't have extra time to meditate. So you know, I don't have a time. So, but if, before you go to sleep, you know, there is none of those excuses, right? You are going to sleep. You are going. Even you are sleeping with somebody next to somebody but still you are sleeping by yourself. And uh, so you, you are not taking time away from anybody, you are not disturbing anybody, so you have really clear opportunity to reflect that uh, closely in yourself, so what's going on before you go to sleep. So it's, it's very, very important to look at yourself how you go to sleep. So. And then if you know, if you recognize something, that there are certain things that you can change, you, you can change, it's good to change, and you are able to change, and bring a little bit of attention toward changing that before you go to sleep. In, because that, the, the five minute, ten minute before you go to sleep, that's very important, critical moment. So let, let's remind again, Five ten minutes before you go to sleep, that five ten minutes is very important, very critical. Uh, how you feel in your body, how you feel in your uh, with your emotions, what kind of thoughts you have, are you stuck somewhere? Are you open? Are you feel good? So those will define very much last ten minutes. So so last ten minute is the practices that you wanted to do, and and able to change that. So that's very important. Now, some few things, few exercises that one can do, of course, uh, in the Maju teaching, it's talk about uh, six different support practices uh, for the sleep yoga practice, and I'm not going to go through all of them, it, you know, so too many will be more uh, confusing. So let's focus on a few, few things and narrow down into one. Okay, think about this. If those I know like many of you, we have like about 447 people live view this very moment. I have, I know some of that you are really like constantly following me, following me on uh, Facebook when I put something there. And, uh, it looks like just just waiting for me to do something on a Facebook live, you know, just just kind of right there. But I know like many of many of you uh, maybe new, many new to these things, so. So I wanted to just kind of have a little bit more open view of preparation to go to sleep. It will be like many of you have your own spiritual practices, different belief. Uh, you have your own uh, yidam goddesses that you work with, the teachers that you work with. So uh, basically, your 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 school, your religion, your spiritual belief, your um, Whatever support that you have, I think that's very important to remember. And that before you go to sleep, because before you go to sleep, it's kind of in a way, it's like you're dying. In a way, you are going by yourself. In a way, you are alone. And this is the moment where you kind of need to feel that you are completely in you, with you. You are grounded. You are supported. Uh, you are connected. Uh, you have a lot of support. You have a uh, the master's presence there, in right in front of crown, in your crown, goddess is sleep. Goddess is present there, uh, and uh, right next to you, around in the room, 
and uh, your Sangha members and the Cyber Sangha. Here we are talking about your Cyber Sangha is a practice this whole month. Everybody is kind of practicing in different time zone. People will be practicing for sure, right? So you know some sense of I'm I am connected, connect connected to the teachers, connected to my masters, connected to the goddess, connected to the sangha, connected to cyber sangha. I'm connected. I am getting help. I'm helping people. So some sense of I think um, whatever general sense, whatever. Um, feeling that you are able to bring that kind of support. I think it's very important. For example, children's, the children's do that, right? They said, uh, you have to kind of, father or mother has to put them in the sleep. Because if they, if you don't go there at the bedtime, read story, just um, be present there, so they know you are there, you are the goddess. You know, the mother is the goddess of the child as before child go to sleep. So when we are going to sleep, it's like we are like a child. We are like this, a little bit more vulnerable, and kind of many times we are affected by our conditions and pains. Instead of that, we bring positive attitude. Goddess is there as a mother, master is there as a father, a teacher, whatever. So feeling that support in general, whichever way you want. So that's important. Whichever you want to do, feel that, that's okay, there's no specific visualization and not thinking about, I might do some mistakes, this way of doing that way of, no, just support. Your teacher supporting you, your Yidam supporting you, the Goddess supporting you, support. So that's general sense. Now most specific thing that you want to do is this one you wanted to remember more clearly, I don't want you to change different things, so you you want to do a very very specific way. Uh, in a, in a, in a Maju teaching, uh, it's it's called Mikpi Pongde. Mikpi Pongde means uh, it's basically uh, is a subject of attention. So the support from uh, object of attention. Okay, support from object of attention. So where is your attention? last five, ten minutes before you go to sleep. That's very important to remember. Where is your attention? We talked about most of the time it's not good. Remember them. Try uh, Commit yourself to changing them. But And then how you change, this is one practice. So what you do, let's say now I am preparing to my go to sleep, so I am doing my some breathing exercise, just clearing something, a feeling support, now I'm, I'm going to go to sleep, right? So at that very moment, what do you do? You look at out in the world. Um, work, office, colleagues, boss, employees, situation, home, family, objects, maybe jobs that you have, Whatever the objects are there, your phone, your computer, whatever objects that you feel a little bit, you are too focused on that, some objects. You are too focused, conceptualizing, thinking too much about those objects. You are too emotionally attached to those objects or people. So those people or objects that you are too focused and you very much likely that night when you, before you go to sleep, those Objects and those uh, thoughts, those emotions will condition your whole night, your well-being, your body's tensions in your body, or your emotional pain. It conditioned by that. So, so those objects, you need to dissolve them into the light. So, how you do that? So, you imagine. For example, I imagine my computer. I imagine my computer dissolved into the light. My phone dissolves into the light. Too much going in the house, my house dissolved into the light. Too much going in a relationship, my partner is dissolving into the light. Too much happening in the office, the whole office building is dissolving into the light. Boss is dissolving into the light. Everything, all the paperwork dissolving into the light. And so just dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. 
all the objects of your attention, of your emotion, your weakness, condition, your pain, conflict, all dissolves into the light. Okay? Just whatever level you can do, do that. And once you feel, yes, you know, I can dissolve some, I can dissolve few, I can dissolve more, and that these lights come back to you, it kind of dissolves in your body. So they, the light comes back to so you, dissolve in the body. So you keep on doing that. Uh, in the beginning it might take a little more longer time, and later you, it might be faster. Um, keep on doing that. And at some point you feel out there, out in the world, there is no object of conflict. There is no object of pain. There is no object of fear. There is no object of ego. They all have dissolved into light, temporarily dissolved into light, and the light has dissolved into you. So what is that point? What is there? That point, you are the only one. So you, you have your body, so you feel your body, but the attention is more in your body. Attention is no longer out extroverted, it's not out there, it's not on those objects of conflict and pain and fear, it's not there, it's just this point, everything is clear, out there it's deleted, transformed, in, transformed into the light. Now there's a sense of something in you, maybe in your body, maybe some sense of little um, identity, pain identity in your body, or, or some sense of blockages in some area of your body, uh, some discomfort in your body, uh, some places you don't feel. So just whatever, uh, bringing awareness in your body and being aware of whatever is happening, and through the awareness, gradually you begin to dissolve your own body, your your legs, your feet, your organs, your every. Uh, cell in your body, partic particularly uh, negative cells, this uh, bad cells, uh, cells of pain, sickness. Just imagine they all are dissolving into the light, and then the, all the light gradually gathering together upward, and right here, right here in the third eye. This, imagine a sphere of light. And uh, in the sphere of light, all the light from your body dissolving into this particular light. And, and in the end, there is nothing else than one single sphere of light. There is nothing else there than one single sphere of light. Imagine. So that single sphere of light is dissolving all the outer object, and that single sphere of light is dissolving all the memories that you hold in your body, your physical dimension dissolves into the light, in that single sphere of light. So there's nothing than one single sphere of light. So you, just for a moment, be very, very clear. I'm free from office, I'm free from boss, I'm free from these employees, this work, I'm free from uh, my family, I'm free from my challenges, house, I'm free from my own body, pain in my body, I'm free from everything. Now what, what, uh, what I am, it's one single sphere of light illuminating light in my forehead. Just just for this moment, just feel that. One single sphere of light. And then, and gradually, you allow that single sphere of light dissolves into pure space, and then there is only a one unconditioned, unbounded, un non-local, uh, pervasive awareness, one's pervasive awareness. 
we say chabri, pervasive rikpa. So there's just pervasive rikpa. That means, in some sense, you have changed yourself. So you you have changed the world that you're perceiving, particularly a pain world, object of pain. You have changed, transformed into the light your own body, organs, cells, particularly those are containing negative memories and negative pain and sickness and you have dissolved everything. So that some somewhere that moment you just have one like being a not a matter but being a space. Being not a cloud but being a luminous sky. Not being a uh, this samsaric body and these pains comes with it. Being your own 